All right guys, in the last video we didn't show you a full shot of the buoy we finished up, so here it is. Okay, so. So delicious. This is a 15 inch buoy. It's gonna have a 10 inch 1084 plain carbon blade with a nice satin finish. And we're going for a really elegant, uh, clean look on it with some subtle embellishments that just kind of take it up to the next level. This is gonna be a course for you guys. But before we get into any course building, we gotta get this shop organized and cleaned up. We didn't do it, Kyle. Uh, organizing the piles of mess everywhere so my sanity levels will go up and the video quality on YouTube will go up because there won't be piles of trash as much sitting around. Like all this stuff just sitting on the shelves and a lot of it we don't use anymore so we're trying to get all organized and uh, we're taking everything down for now on these shelves and we're going to put the stuff back up that we have to have and then find places for stuff we don't and hopefully throw away a bunch of stuff too. Look, these are being saved on the shelf. They're fun to cut. That's fine. We you to... saved those. We'll get a bunch more. Don't worry. Paper towels are something I use a lot of. Or do you consider yourself a hoarder? No, I'm not a hoarder. A lot of this mess has come in when Dad came in, actually. Dad, what do you have to say about that? Dad built the shelves to get the stuff off the floor. I built these shelves. Scared all over. Mom and I built these. You helped me put these up. Or Anna did. You, you, bought, you bought these cabinets. I put these up. Uh-uh. Uh-huh. Dad, when you came in, you brought these giant shelves, things, cabinets, and then just piled stuff inside of them and piled stuff on top of them. Just think what it would look and like look if I the, hadn't brought them. I'll, I'll take to you Dad's into the- Dad's defense, before he got out here, he's, Kyle did say that Dad keeps the shop clean. But he does have a lot of stuff. Dad, a lot Dad of stuff keeps with the it. shop really clean, but he piles stuff all over too. We'll, I'll show you in the breezeway. Like the breezeway, <laughs> top of fridge. I'm gonna say, Half of this is dad's, so maybe maybe I'm half default <laughs> too. What's up with the keg? There's beer making stuff there. I didn't bring that. Okay, the keg is the least amount of cluttery trash looking thing that, out of everything there. This is all dad's stuff here. There's literally trash hanging from the vice. <laughs> I use those. I probably do them. I way use those. Dad, when you show, uh, fish what, what do you use over here, Dad? I use everything. Uh, I don't use this. I need to find a home for this. The CT? I use ferric, <laughs> use ferric chloride. It's still good. Sweet I'll tea. Use it for something. Put a big label on it saying sweet tea. I don't know. I use everything here. I get my, my hands touch everything here at least once a week. So I approve of like half of what's going on here, but then like there's half of it that I don't, like the piles of stuff here and stuff here. I got several night projects going on over there. And then the stuff on both of these cabinets is just kind of chaotic looking. I just like how dad has a defense for everything that's trash. He's like, he has a reason for it. Three, I'll show you the I have three knife projects going on right there over in that two square feet. So on top of the cabinets, but I'll show you later when we clear this out, the inside of the cabinets is uh, chaos too. I think the top looks really good over here on this one. Dad's defense, this isn't all that. No, 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 no. Uh, 75%. Seventy-five percent. Seventy-five percent of the stuff that I want to clean up is dad stuff. Got a bunch of prints out here that have been building up for a while. Need to put them inside with my big stash. There's a dead brown recluse. <laughs> so yeah, there's a real fancy hunter I made with a frame handle, mammoth ivory, and feather Damascus. This was a really cool buoy here. I loved that, that guard. I didn't quite do that guard shape, but it kind of looked like a bow tie when I got done. This one's not even finished yet. This one is inside waiting to be gold inlaid. Here's one I made and took to Arkansas this year. Trying to figure out pommel designs for one of the daggers I did recently. I think this was Damascus that I was sketching up for 
one of the projects, not the sword, but. Ooh. This was a sweet little knife with mother of pearl. Chili cook off giveaway knife that Josh owns. Because he won he won the chili cook off by a long shot. He was the only one that made chili that was actually spicy. It wasn't crazy hot, but none of the other chilies out of the, we had like 30 entries. None of them were spicy except for Josh's. So it was also really good flavor wise. Dagger I made last year. This was a buoy I had at Blade Show last year. <laughs> Another dagger from last year. Big dagger. I'll have to show you my whole collection of sketches sometime. I think I've kept pretty much all of them so far. A lot of them are big and they're on like pieces of paper that are just taped together. <laughs> Need to get some large paper stock sitting around to sketch on. So I had a whole bunch of failed projects slash just forged out things that haven't been finished yet that are kind of got put aside and that'll probably never be finished on top of the heat treating oven here. So we got a whole bunch of different things. So I'll tell you a little bit about each one. This ginormously thick thing was just uh, one day I was like really frustrated with Damascus and wanted to just forge out a big giant chopper at a 5160. So this is just plain carbon and uh, yeah, so I just hammered that giant thing out. Big giant blade with a little tiny tang. All right, actually, the, yeah, the tang's kind of skinny. That'll never end up being that. You could forge it into something smaller. This, uh, this, my friend from China and I forged out. He came over to my shop and stayed for a couple days. He'd never done any forging, so he forged out this blade here. This is a really, really pretty mosaic Damascus that had some flaws and stuff in it and didn't make the cut, but it's absolutely gorgeous. Uh, a little W2 Hunter that I forged out. Don't remember why or what for. W1 Hunter that I forged out of a little round bar uh, for the, the chili cook-off I was talking about earlier. I did this as a demo. I did that and I made some Damascus and stuff. It is horribly thick. It's like 3 eighths of an inch thick. I don't know what was going through my mind when I forged that thing. Actually, I, I, did, I do know I was in a super hurry. And this is a blade that's been sitting around for like six or seven years, 5160. It's heat treated and tempered. Uh, make an excellent knife. I don't remember why I never finished it, but yeah. Probably gonna go put these over in the bucket of projects that'll never be. Oh look, it's my first ever etch tank. It's a little tiny one, it's a little tiny. What did I used to make, little tiny folders or something? It's so small. Still got something in it. The lid is like sealed on, but that's probably still got like, that's probably got my first ever batch of ferric chloride in there. <laughs> For size comparison, I did the sword in this tank. And I've got, this tank over here that holds like two gallons. <laughs> uh, I have some other tanks laying around. This one over here. This was this was like my second or third tank. So started off with this little one. Then it got a little taller. Then it got a little taller. Then it got a little wider. Then it got a little wider. And then it got really tall. <laughs> The next day. Getting the, uh, getting the shop organized still. Lots of stuff needs put away more orderly and gotten rid of. Like this green suspicious liquid. This is uh, copper sulfate that my brother-in-law was trying to copper plate with. Actually kind of worked halfway.
Oh, hello. Check out the shop. We've got it completely made over and it looks amazing. So first, we have the breezeway. In between my house and shop, it was bad. There was stuff just piled up on the ground. But now we've got like this rack in here. It's completely made over. Got ladders hanging up instead of just like laying around somewhere. Got all of our extra bottles laying right here instead of just all over the shop. So all the extra propane and argon gas and all that stuff right there. It's super, super nice. And we've just completely cleaned the shop and reorganized tons of stuff all over the place. Um, when I say we, I'm talking about my dad, Jeff, my mom, Patty, my sister, Anna, came over for a couple days and helped out. Um, of course, me, uh, and then Josh, the guy behind the camera right now. <laughs> um, yeah, so we started with this back corner because this is a lot of what you see here on YouTube. So I'll be standing at my workbench and you'll see like this back here. We're gonna hang some cool stuff on the wall eventually, maybe some awards or guitars or tools or all the above, something like that. But for now, we just needed to get these shelves cleaned up because it was just piles of good stuff, but it was stuff that didn't need to be out all the time and it just looked real trashy. So we got lots of containers to put things in to organize it. Got a little uh, mascot to hold the excess Sharpies there. So you may have noticed I have this big, like kind of professional, heavy bag here. This thing's like 150 pounds and it's actually a pretty nice one. I, uh, I definitely want to get back into using that a little bit more. So up here, I have a very old compound bow that I think dad may have given it to me or I may have bought it from him for like 10 bucks or something. I used to play around with that thing a lot. We had a hay bale like 50 yards away and I used to enjoy shooting that. And this is my combination mill slash lathe. I bought this before I had my, my full size milling machine. Um, the lathe works really well on it, especially for doing little pommel nuts and, and pommels and stuff like that. But don't get one of these if you want a good milling machine because the mill does not work at all. The way the, the way the head on this milling machine pivots, you can't ever fasten it in place strong enough to actually do good milling work on it. So it's great for lathing make all my little pommel nuts and anything that you want round right here. Right here, this is dad's assembly area. Uh, this is where a lot of the little fitting and measuring and uh, assembling of stuff goes on for dad right here with his chef's knives and whatever other projects he's got going on. You see we got lots of scrap pieces of wood from different projects and all sorts of different finishing and epoxies and stuff going on. Here's the majority of the steel supply. Uh, this is a steel rack dad built not too long ago. It's got, I was thinking it would just be uh, high carbon steel for knives, but it's actually got a bunch of mild steel wrapped in there too, so we need to build another one for that. And here's a sweet little buffing setup we got going on. This was a motor off of a big squirrel cage blower fan, and uh, if you go back to some of the earlier videos we did, you might see it just super hillbilly, just kind of sitting on some milk crates, and it still had the blower fan hooked up to it. Uh, but Dad mounted it on this, uh, this old smoker, using it as a table, and it's, much nicer now, we even have a little switch to turn it off and on, so just the little things in life. This is my workhorse bandsaw. I use the tar out of this thing. I had a little tiny one that Grizzly sells, like, like that big total. That thing worked okay, but this thing's much, much better, especially if you make a bunch of Damascus. Take this table off of here. This thing specializes in just cutting off bar stock, so it works great for cutting up uh, Damascus and mosaics and everything. Highly recommend getting a good bandsaw if you need to cut much steel up because there's not much waste with the uh, skinny blade compared to a chop saw that has a, a wide blade. So this is my newest piece of equipment actually. I bought this about a year ago. This is an AMK variable speed reversible disc sander. And believe it or not, I didn't get a disc sander until, like I said, a year ago. A lot of people start out with these earlier and I wish I would have because it is amazing for flattening things out. Um, highly, highly recommended. Of course, it's not a necessity. You can definitely get by without it, but it really makes life easier for a few things. This is Kyle's niece, my grandbaby girl, Cherry. Mm -hmm. Cherry. Cherry, over there. Hi, Cherry. Hey, hi, YouTube. Say hi. Do we have Charity's permission to post this on YouTube? <laughs> oh, I'm gonna a little bit. <laughs> It is not one of her best 
last day, so sure. <laughs> oh, well, this this you're gonna be a YouTube star. Aww. She's not sure about out here. I don't think she's ever been out here. She's like really like what's this? This is my first ever piece of equipment that I bought for the shop back when I first started making knives. I made my first ever knife when I was 14 and I liked it so much that I wanted to go out. I, I just shaped it with an angle grinder but I wanted a nicer finish on it so I went out and bought this just to finish my first knife because I knew I liked it that much. So this is just a grizzly and it uses a 2 by 72 inch belt over here. I don't use the belt very much anymore, but the uh, the buffer is still highly used in here. I've also got a rack back here with lots of different buffing wheels and compounds and stuff going on. I'm always like collecting more buffing wheels because I love trying out different ones because they actually really give different finishes sometimes and you don't know until you, until you try them out. So this is my KMG grinder. This thing is the main workhorse, getting the bevels and everything ground in the blades. Uh, I bought this thing probably Two, two or three years into knife making, I uh, outgrew that Grizzly one and needed something better, and I'm still using it. It's not even variable speed. It has a three-step pulley, so you get three speeds. Uh, just haven't really had the extreme necessity to upgrade to variable speed, but I'm going to someday, because it'll be a nice convenience. We've also got a bunch of switches right here. Well, we got two switches right here. Uh, one that turns this on, and the other one is a ventilation system up in the uh, attic that blows dust outside. So we've got this uh, this tube going up to the blower up there and uh, it's got a bunch of different gate switches on it. So we can turn it off here and it'll go over to the surface grinder exclusively. Or you can uh, have it sucking the dust and uh, nasty stuff up right here. And then it also goes over to the Grizzly and the uh, disc sander. And each one has some little gate valves that you can shut off there so you can get the most suction at whichever workstation you're working at. Right here we've got the belt rack. Dad recently upgraded it so it's like four times bigger than it used to be. Got some nice uh, diameter pipes for the belts to hang on so they don't get like kinked or anything. Uh, try to keep a bunch of them on hand. This is the surface grinder right here. I love this tool big time. This is a Kovo surface grinder made in Benton Harbor, Michigan in 1958 and it weighs like 2,500 pounds, it's a beast. Uh, uses a big, big grinding wheel. I think it's one inch by 12 when it's brand new. Got a six by 18 inch magnetic chuck to hold down uh, anything that's magnetic. And I currently don't really use it very often with coolant, but you can do that if you want to. I normally just run it dry and uh, use the ventilation system. This is a super fun tool. Here we've got the air compressor. Uh, blows stuff off, runs air tools, uh, runs my engraver. It's also plumbed in most of the shop, so we have air outlets all over in different parts of the shop, so we can just plug in if we need it and uh, don't have to run hoses all across the shop, which is super handy. This big blue thing over here is the hydraulic pump and electric motor that runs the hydraulic press right here. So this thing's got a 10 horse, three phase motor and uh, it's a beast and it's really, really cool unit. It's all like self-contained, so it's got an oil tank right on top of it. It runs on three phase power, but we don't have any three phase right here. So we're running on a static converter which loses a little bit of the power that the motor would give out, but it's plenty big, so it's not really lost at all because it's overbuilt. This is one of the funnest tools in the shop. This is the hydraulic press my dad and I made years and years ago. Uh, it's got a big, massive hydraulic cylinder, like nine inch diameter with a three inch ram, and uh, lots, of, lots of throat space in there. I think it's got like 14 inches of stroke. Um, this thing's awesome. The frame's actually made out of Sinclair ga gas station signs that were welded together to like double them up and make them a little bit thicker. Uh, we've got foot controls down here. You'll see me running this thing super fast in the chair right there so I get both my feet on it. And uh, you can also do some, some fine control by hand if you want to. Although you can do really fine control with the feet too. But yeah, this thing's a beast and uh, definitely one of the funnest tools in the shop. This is my massive 450 pound anvil that uh, I built. 
It was a counterweight off of a forklift. It was one of those big boom forklifts. It has like a 40 foot reach, so it needed a big counterweight to keep it from tipping over. So dad cut it out with a, uh, a torch, really big torch, cut the general shape out, and then I spent about a month with the welder filling areas in that got cut out too much and grinding it to shape and uh, shaping the horns and everything on it. Uh, really love this thing. It's way bigger than I would ever need though. I thought when I was first starting out that I would need a really big anvil, but it turns out you don't need a very big anvil for knife making at all. But I, I definitely wanted to make something that I'd never have to like upgrade size wise and that's definitely this thing. I made this when I was like 15 or 16 back when I had time to spend like a month just working on an anvil. Right here we got the TIG welder that I love to use on the uh, Mosaic Damascus and just Damascus in general, but it really, really helps a lot in the, the Mosaic Damascus process, getting all the tiles completely sealed off and forge welded together. This is kind of the uh, fabricating table. Uh, still need to go through and organize that a little bit. It's cleaned up, but I got random stuff on here. This is a big old angle grinder that I do all the, the hogging Damascus cleaning up process with. This thing's got a five horse motor and it uses a big old nine inch diameter wheel. This is the milling machine that I like to use for all sorts of different things from just flattening metal and wood to milling out slots for guards and, and uh, drilling holes and stuff. I also use it to drill any kind of hole that I need I'll use this thing for. Uh, great addition to the shop, comes in handy on every project, really like this thing. So my tip for the day is get yourself a really good vise. If you have a milling machine, don't sacrifice quality on your vise. For the longest time, for like four or five years, I just used the vise that came with this, but it was horrible. It was almost like a vise that you would just mount on a workbench. I finally bought an actual milling vise. A couple years after I was using that bad one and it made all the difference in the world. It turned this milling machine from basically a glorified drill press to actually being able to do full blown milling. Just because when you get a nice vise that's made for milling, the tolerances on it are tight and it doesn't wobble around and stuff. And when you clamp a piece of metal in there, it stays flat and it holds it nice and sturdy. So get a good milling vise if you have a milling machine. Here's the heat treating oven. This thing is invaluable in my shop because I love having the precise control uh, that you can get with an electric kiln like this. It's pretty big. It's got like a uh, six inch entryway that's about 24 inches deep or so. And it'll go up to 2200 degrees. Use it for tempering and normalizing and uh, heating my blades up before hardening them. Very valuable tool to have. Here's my uh, sanding station slash detail file work slash anything small and detailed where I need a vise. I do a lot of my like fitting hand sanding here. I do my blade hand sanding over on the vise that's mounted on the anvil. But right here, I like to get this light real close and get in here and do my handles and fittings and stuff right here at this station. And my file work and everything. I, I like to keep all the, uh, the files that I use a lot of times out in the open right here. I also have my Variac controller that I use to etch in my maker's mark and uh, do all that kind of stuff right here. This is the newest addition to my shop. It's this super cool, really high workbench with a nice solid maple top on it. Uh, Dad built this for me really recently. I got a brand new large granite uh, countertop cut out on here for doing really flat, precise things. Uh, and it's like twice as big as my old table. And it's also at a standing height, so I'll be doing a lot of my stuff standing at it, and then I can sit at a high stool if I need to really get in there and uh, see what I'm doing up close. Oh, I'm loving this thing so far. All right, guys, I have a job for you. Go over to Instagram, at Kyle Royer Knives, and DM me a photo of your shop, and I'll post it up on my story. Only the first 20 I'm gonna post up, so get on it quick. And I think it'll be really fun to let everybody see uh, some different shops out there. And I want to see your shop. I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye. This is the milling machine. <laughs> <laughs> Don't put that on the blooper reel. Oh, I will. This is obviously a milling machine. For those who don't know what one looks like, you'll definitely believe me. Josh? It was dirt in my fingernail. Oh, that's gross. That's even more gross. I make them clean.